Well, in any trade, the most important thing is to get paid for your, you know, goods and services. If you don't get paid, it becomes a gift you're giving away. It can make you go bankrupt. That's why it is so important to pay proper attention to the methods you're going to use for getting paid if you are selling. And on the other hand, if you're buying and you're the importer, it is important to get the goods. You don't want to just pay the money and then receive either no goods or the wrong product. Now there are five primary methods of payment we're going to look at. Uh, the, the simple one is cash in advance. If I'm selling it, I say, this is my invoice, this is how much it's going to cost, uh, pay me advance, and I will send the goods to you. It's the best method for the exporter, for the seller. But obviously the buyer has got the minimum protection here. You can pay the money and get nothing. You may think that nobody does that, but most of you do this sort of purchases. When you go online and you buy something and you pay it in advance in anticipation that the goods would get to you. And you do billions of dollars to spend every day on that basis. It's a question of trust. Do you trust the other party or not? If you trust them, that's the cheapest method of payment because usually you're trusting each other so very little insurance costs involved or different documentation regarding arranging and engineering, you know, sort of uh, the other types of payment. The next one we're going to look at is letter of credit. Letters of credit, it's what it is. The buyer, if, if I'm the buyer and I want to pay some somebody for their goods, instead of paying them direct, I go to my bank and say, look, I'm going to buy these products. I'm going to pay them a million dollars but I don't want to pay the million dollars before I get the goods. So I give the money to the bank. Uh, the bank uh, would uh, issue a letter of credit uh, to the beneficiary, to the seller, that once they have satisfied the condition of letter of credit, they get paid. And the conditions usually are that the goods, as described by, in the invoice, would be given to the shipper, to the forwarder, and if mean, it is FOB, then it would be on board, or if it's safe, it would be a, in the destination. But once the, the seller has handed over the goods and it got the, the shipping documents, can go and present that to the bank and get, it, get paid. So I'm sure my money is safe till the goods have moved out of the ownership of the seller and it is within the shipment and I've got the, the documentation which... Uh, shows my ownership. We're going to come back to LC more details in a minute, but let's look at the, the next type of payment. Now, the LC is the most secure way for both parties because both of them are pretty safe to make sure they don't part with their money without the goods and you are not selling, sending the goods without getting paid. The next one is the uh, bill of exchange, the other name, documentary uh, collections. Now, bill of exchange work is cheaper than LC because you don't need to have a lot of paperwork for it. What you do, you nominate a bank and say uh, to collect your money. I'm an exporter. I'm saying I'm exporting these goods to XYZ and uh, you nominate the bank. Say, look, these guys, once they have paid, give them the, uh, the title deeds. So the shipping document goes to the bank the bank waits for the importer to come in and say he pays. He gives them a, the, the shipping documents, which is title deeds of the goods, and they can, they can go and collect the goods. Now, it is cheaper, but there is obviously dangers with it that what if the importer doesn't come and collect it? So your goods are left in a port somewhere in the world and no buyer. Obviously, there are ways of protecting yourself with bank guarantees and so on, which we'll look at it later on. But that's second way of doing it using banks in the middle as intermediaries. Usually if the trade has been going on, you've been working with your manufacturer or your export importer and so on, and you have built a relationship, you go to open account. Open account is that the, the exporter, the manufacturer, give a 30 days, 60 days, 90 days sort of, it depends to the trade, credit to the importer to pay. 
So they're sending the goods and the payment hopefully would come back within 60 days. So every time, and uh, if it's a 30 day, let's say if it's 60 days sort of credit, every invoice before it hits the 60 days has to be paid. There are way of getting protections about it. You can have a standby LC, which is not used, is only used in case if the payment is not made. Uh, the other method of payment is called consignment payment. Now that is, uh, again, the goods are sent to the importer and the payment is made after the goods are sold. Uh, it may seem very advantageous to, let's say, to the importer, but in many cases you need, the importer need to hold on to some level of a stock locally to be able to maintain the supply in the market, the supply chain in the market. And they don't have a working capital to keep you know that amount of stock so the manufacturer will say look keep it there and as they are sold pay me and they obviously they fine tune it based on the demand in that market now these are the five different methods of payments now i'm going to look at the letter of credit again now remember letter of credit is a different contract between the buyer and seller where the buyer's bank <clears throat> would guarantee a payment to the seller's bank, to the seller via a nominated bank, that once the goods are shipped and the documentary proof of that shipment is provided, is handed over to the bank, the seller would get paid. Now the way it works, I'm the importer, I go to my bank, which is the issuing bank, and I say, look, I bought these goods for a million dollars, this is a million dollars, I deposit there, and say, open an LC in favor of the seller and the seller has the nominated bank and uh, according to the LC ha as a contract has got conditions the conditions of LC is usually that uh, that the, the seller would provide the bill of lading the shipping all the shipping document multiple copies of invoice multiple copy of copies of uh, shipping document, maybe certificate of origins, uh, and any other documentation, proof of the goods being in good condition, whatever are the documents, once is written in the LC. So once I have, as an exporter, satisfied all those points, I've got the documentary proof for it, I take it to the bank and the bank would pay me. And in, mo in normal cases, the stand standard LC is irrevocable, that once it's signed, it cannot be changed or stopped. So as a seller, I'm safe. I know as soon as I produce the goods within the time frame and conditions of the LC and I ship it, I will get paid. On the other hand, the buyer is safe in a way saying that the goods would be sent to him uh, in as described by the invoice with all the documentary documentation there uh, with a sh uh, hand it over to the shipper, being your shipper or independent shipper, and then the money is released. So that's the best way of doing it. It's uh, The risk is spread between the buyers and seller in this situation. Uh, you can arrange a variety of payment. The LCs can be even have a payment uh, delay in it, in a way uh, produce, giving a bit of credit facility to, this, uh, to the buyer. Uh, but it costs. It does cost money. It uh, has a lot of preparation, documentation, and so on. Uh, obviously, it's more expensive than, let's say, pay, uh, uh, cash in advance or payment on account or consignment methods because they don't have any of these things. Now, there are different types of LCs as well. Sorry, I haven't been updating there. Now, the key points within the LC you need to have in mind. One was that it's irrevocable usually. It's a contract between the buyer and seller and uh, you cannot go back on it. Now, just, just to rem uh, go through the points once more, the importer is the one who goes to his bank. Now, just, just going through the steps now, one by one. The importer is the one who arranged uh, the LC to be issued via his bank. 
next step, the, the issuing bank would uh, transmit the LC to the nominated bank. The nominated bank is the buyer's bank, the, the seller's bank, the export, uh, the seller's bank, which is uh, going to receive the money on behalf of the seller. So they say, like, the LC has been open on these conditions. The, the exporter would then forward the goods, get the shipping documents. Once he's got the shipping documents and all of the documents which are stipulated in the LC, he goes to his bank, to the nominated bank, and hand it over to his nominated bank. The nominated bank would inform the issuing bank the conditions are uh, satisfied, and the issuing bank would... Uh, debit the client's account and send the money forward to nominated bank who would release the money to the seller. It may look confusing but it's simple. All the documentation is on your course which you can uh, follow it. Now a few tips before I finish this talk and that's uh, start talking to your bank to get advice. Uh, they know how the LCs are done, even if you haven't done it before. Uh, make sure the conditions of LCs, which are those documents which you have to hand it, as an exporter hand in, hand in to, to be able to get your money, that those documents you can provide. If there is a, a document stipulated which you cannot produce or get, I don't know, certain inspections or certain declaration, you make sure it goes out of the LC contract. Otherwise, there would be a discrepancy. And remember, the bank is not dealing with what you're shipping or what's the quality of it. The bank is dealing with documents. A letter of credit conditions are about documents. These documents either are there or they are not there. If they are not there, then there is a discrepancy, no payment till you sort it out. So, try to make sure that whatever is stipulated in the LC contract, you have it. And if you don't have it, do not agree to that LC condition. Now, I think you can follow the rest of it on your notes and also talk to your bank. Each bank has got a slightly different forms for opening LC or being a nominated to receive LC. Just ask them and they will tell you one last thing between what's the confirmed LC an unconfirmed LC. Now, if a nomin if is an issuing bank in, in a country which you are not familiar with and you are not sure and is risky, that means either the country politically is risky or the bank itself is uh, have got a chance of going bankrupt, you can ask that I want the LC to be confirmed by either my local bank, if you are a European bank or American bank. What does that do? It means uh, then then the the advisory bank, the nominated bank, become the one confirming bank. What the bank would do, obviously, they're going to charge something uh, to confirm the LC. A confirm LC it means that if the issuing bank goes bankrupt or doesn't pay, the confirming bank would pay. So if you're issuing LC coming from a developing country, a local bank, you don't know, never heard about them, and say, I can't accept this. Then you say, okay, get it confirmed by, let's say I'm in UK, Barclays Bank is my bank. I said, I want Barclays Bank to confirm it. And they pay the price for that. There's a small price to pay, depends on the risk factor, and it gets confirmed. And then I'm secure that if the, anything goes wrong in the origin, I would get paid anyhow. And that's the confirmation. See you later.